Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mutemo Masheke. I'm a product manager in Azure Machine Configuration. And today, I'm excited to walk you through how you can use the Guest Configuration PowerShell module to author custom machine configuration policies. Now, before I go into the demo, I just wanted to introduce machine configuration to anyone that might be new. Essentially, machine configuration is Azure's first class solution to allow you to be able to enforce or audit settings, workloads, or applications in your server environment at scale for not only Azure VMs, but also our connected machines that are either on-prem or in another cloud. For you to successfully author custom policies in machine config, you need the following enabled. First of all, you need our extension enabled in your environment. The best way to install our extension is really simple, which is done by deploying our prerequisite initiative in Azure policy uh, today. The second thing you need enabled is you need to have the latest version of the guest configuration PowerShell module installed in your authoring environment. The reason why this is critical is because we are periodically releasing updated versions of the module to include our latest and greatest features, most recently support for user assigned identities. And we want to make sure that you don't miss out on any of our latest standards um, in Azure today. The third point is that for you to effectively describe your desired state, you need to have desired state configuration resources for the settings you want to configure. And so in this example, I'll be using the computer management DSC resource, but there are many others available in the community today. Notably includes the NX tools resource that is maintained by machine configuration and contains um, a special collection of settings that you can configure for your Linux machines today. The last requirement is that you need to have access to a storage account that our agent can pull from, either through Azure Storage or any other publicly listed um, storage account. The benefit of using Azure Storage is you can actually privately store your configuration files and provide access to the servers within scope of your policy using a user assigned identity. This allows you to leverage Microsoft's latest security standards in order to deploy packages within your environment. Now, without wasting any more time, let's begin. So in here, you can see that I have my authoring environment set up using Visual Studio Code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a DSC resource that enforces Eastern Standard Time on my machines. Now, you can stack this configuration file with many different DSC resources. But in this case, I'm just going to use one resource for the sake of simplicity. So I'm going to select this and run. And what this does is it generates a MOF file. And in this folder, you can see that the MOF file that we've generated basically contains the same settings that we've described in our DSC resource as well as additional metadata that will be helpful for the agent to successfully implement this in your environment. So next up, what we want to do is we want to generate a zip package. The reason why this package is important is because it bundles together the DSC resources that describe the settings that you want to enforce on your machine together with the MOF file that we just created that contains your actual desired state. This package is then uploaded in your storage container that is then accessed by our agent in, across your Azure fleet in order to implement these settings. And so the implementation of settings in your environment happens through two types in this case, um, which is one audit and set, which basically reports on the state of your resources and also enforces the state that we've just described. And in this case, will be enforcing Eastern Standard Time as a time zone across all the servers within scope of the policy. However, you can edit this type property to only be audit. And in that case, all it will do is report the state of the settings, um, in this case, time zone, without carrying out any enforcement. 
And so we're going to run this commandlet provided to us by the guest configuration module in order to generate the package. And so as you can see, we now have this timezone.zip time package that we've just generated. And now we can successfully upload it to our storage blob and then create a policy um, to enforce the package. Now, maybe before you make a deployment, you would like to test and see what the behavior of this specific uh, package is. And so the guest configuration module provides you, you an easy way to be able to do so using these two test commandlets. The first one, which is guest, get guest configuration package compliance status, simply does a get call on the setting properties that you've outlined and reports the compliance state. And so in this case, we're just going to run this. It might take a second and see what the state of the time zone is on our machine. And as we can see, the compliance status returns false, which makes sense because my time zone currently is specific standard time, which is where the second command lead comes in, which is the start guest configuration package remediation. And essentially, this command lead provides an enforcement capability of the settings we just outlined in the package. And so we're going to run it so that we can enforce Eastern Standard Time um, in our machine, which in this case is just my authoring machine for the sake of testing. Perfect. So we were able to enforce a new time zone value for my machine. And so now, according to my computer, I'm on Eastern Standard Time as desired, and the compliance status returns true. And so that's as far as testing goes. It's really quick and easy. And so now we'll go into generating the policy now that we have the package. Generating the policy definition can be done in two ways, um, depending on whether or not you have a package that is privately stored we may need to be to use a managed identity in order to retrieve the package and deploy it to all your machines. So the way to do this with a managed identity would be that we would first need access to the local content path, um, which allows the commandlet to generate a hash that we can then check against at runtime when the evaluation is happening on the machine to ensure that the package that is uploaded to the storage account and the package that was just authored are the same. And so in this case, what we'll be doing is we'll insert the local path here. What we're also going to need is the resource ID of the managed identity, which I've provided um, using this parameter. Additionally, because at the time I'm making this video, Arc machines do not support user assigned identities. And so this feature specifically would only be applicable to Azure VMs. But as you can see, we have this new guest configuration policy commandlet that takes in all our parameters with display names of the policy we want to create, a description of the policy, a path that's going to store the JSON of the generated policy, the platform that the uh, policy is running on, which could be either Windows or Linux. The mode of enforcement, which is a very critical piece that could either be audit just to simply report the state of the settings, apply an autocorrect, which applies the settings and continuously remediates on them, or apply and monitor, which only applies the settings once and then does not autocorrect for drift, but continues to report the state of the settings on the machine. And so as you can see, we've created a new folder here. And I'll just click into this folder. And as you can see, we have the policy definition generated um, that enforces um, a time zone value. In this case, we won't say it's PST. We'll actually say it's EST. Uh, let's see, where else? OK, perfect. And then going back to the policy definition, and essentially, we're now ready to upload our new Azure policy definition. And so all we have to do is simply select and run this command, and this policy should show up in, our, in the Azure portal under available definitions. And there you have it. Once you've run the new AZ policy definition commandlet, 
you will find the policy that you just created available under your list of definitions. And you can then create a policy assignment in order to apply these settings at scale in your environment. And the best part about policy definitions is that they're reusable. And so for as long as your machines have access to the managed identity, this action should be very repeatable um, several times in your environment as you change the scope of applicability. Now, let's say you didn't have a managed identity because your package is perhaps stored in another public domain. That is perfectly fine. Essentially, for that to work, all you have to do is then just take out the reference to the local content path. You also need to, you no longer need to exclude Arc machines because um, the assumption here is that the content URI refers to a publicly available um, package um, that's referenceable using one link. And so all you have to do is then just run this command and it should be successful. Let's see. Well, I'll change the name. Say no MSI. And you should be able to generate policy definition. Awesome. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this tutorial. I hope you have a great experience authoring custom machine configuration policies. And I'll catch you next time.